Hello, I have this 360 camera, the Ryko Theta S. It's a great camera for capturing environments to then later match CG elements into live action footage. It also, like a lot of other consumer 360 cameras, has an HDR mode which attempts to take a wide dynamic range and compress it down into an 8-bit JPEG. Now this is a far cry from the HDRIs that you may have downloaded from websites like HDRI Haven, but I kind of wanted to see whether I could use this super compressed HDR image as an environment map within Blender, perhaps using a chain of nodes to create the same effect as that fully wide dynamic range 32-bit HDRI float image. Yeah, so wish me luck. A good question is why would I even want to do this? Uh, the answer is speed. If I want to capture the traditional way by capturing multiple exposures, for me with this camera I have to pair it to the phone via Wi-Fi, I have to set up various settings through an app and then wait for about three minutes while it rattles through all of the different exposures. And you know, sometimes it's not the most reliable. Now I know three minutes isn't a massive time to wait, but if you're in a particularly busy shoot or you're out in the street, it's nice to be able to just go in, quickly snap an image and then just move on. So I set the camera up in the space and rattled off multiple exposures to capture the full range of light available in this scene. And then took another one with the HDR mode. Importing them into the computer, I brought all of the bracketed image into Affinity Photo, merged them together into one 32-bit image, I then quickly set up the scene and tracking in Blender and imported the 32-bit HDR as well as the compressed HDR mode JPEG at 8-bit. So here we have the true HDR in Blender and if I sample the various pixel values we can see that as soon as we hover over a light down here in the bottom left we get really high values over 1, sometimes up to 30 or over 30. And then if we jump to our faux HDR look, everything is within 0 and 1. And it looks way more saturated as well, so we might have to deal with that too. Okay, let's look at correcting that with nodes. I'm not sure how repeatable this is for different scenes, but I've got a solution I'm kind of happy with. Here is the true HDR, 32-bit. And here is the faux 8-bit HDR with the adjustment nodes. And the node setup I ended up going with looks a bit like this. We have our true 32-bit HDR just pretty much being plugged straight into the environment. And then we have our faux HDR um, and a little mix shader up here so we can switch between them. Effectively what that is doing is this, we, we have this chain of nodes which goes about correcting the oversaturation and the vividness in the baked in faux HDR. And then this chain, the mask here, uh, the, which is just a color ramp, being used to isolate the highlights, uh, multiply the hell out of them, and then using that value to multiply the power of the color pixels that have been marginally adjusted to make them slightly less colorful, and then plugging that in. And that, for me, gives a pretty accurate result. So, in summary, I'm pretty happy with the results. I will still be using multiple exposures on a professional shoot, just to reduce the risk a little bit, but when I'm out and about doing little visual effects projects, I will feel a lot more comfortable just going in handheld, taking a snap, and then moving straight on. And the benefit of doing it completely handheld without the use of any apps is pretty fantastic. But maybe you have a better technique, or a better camera, one that can take bracketed exposures with just the press of a button. Uh, if you do, then let me know in the comments, and thanks very much for watching.